This is part 2 of ASP.NET Web Services. In this video, we'll discuss consuming a web service from a client application. This is continuation to part 1, so please watch part 1 before proceeding. To consume a web service, all we need to do is generate a proxy class using the web service Vistil document. Vistil stands for Web Service Description Language. If you recollect from the previous session, this is the calculator web service that we have built. And to get to the Vistal document of this web service, all we need to do is click on the service description link that takes us to the Vistal document as you can see here in the URL. So what is this Vistal document? Vistal document formally defines a web service. And what does this Vistal document contain? It contains lots of things. It contains list of all the methods that are exposed by a web service. If you look at the web service that we have built, it only exposes one method called add. And if you look at this Vistal document, look at that add method is listed here. And not only that, along with the list of method names, Vistal document also specifies the parameters that this method expects. So basically, if you look at this add method, it expects two parameters. Um, and their names are first number and second number. You can see the parameter names here, first number and second number. Along with the parameter names, it also specifies their data types. For both of these parameters, data type is integer, and we can see the type here, integer. Not only that, Vistal document also specifies the return type of that method. So basically, when we call this method, it's going to do something. In our case, it's going to add these two numbers together, and it's going to return their sum, which is an integer. So the return type of this add method is an integer. And if you look at this section here, look at the return type, it's an integer. And look at the name here, it says add result. Basically, that means the result of this add method. What is its type? It's an integer. So using the information that is present in this Vistal document, Visual Studio can generate a proxy class for us. And let's now see how to generate a proxy class using this Vistal document. So now let's flip to Visual Studio. So first of all, let's add a web application to the solution. And to do that, right click on the solution, add new project. Now, we can invoke web service from any application. You can invoke it from uh, a web application or Windows application or even from a console application. Not only a .NET application, any type of application, uh, you know, built on any platform. For example, a Java web application also can in invoke an ASP.NET web service. Okay. All right. Now, let's go ahead and add an ASP.NET web application. Let's call this calculator web application. Let's click OK. So here we have the web application. Now let's generate a proxy class. And to generate a proxy class, right click on the references folder and select this option, add service reference. If you select this option, add reference, you can add references to the assemblies either in your project or to the .NET assemblies. Now we want to add a reference to a service, that is to a web service. So select this option, add service reference. And within this window, add service reference window, we need to type the address of the Vistal document. And here we have the address of the Vistal document. So let's copy it and paste it within the address bar. And then click this Go button. Look at that, you know, the calculator web service is detected. Now, is it mandatory to specify question mark Vistal? Not really. You can even get rid of that. And then when you click Go, it still discovers that. So it's not mandatory that you specify question mark Vistal at the end of the URL of your web service. And then if you expand this arrow, and select this option here. Look at that. This web service exposes one method called add. And then give a meaningful namespace for your service reference. Let's call this maybe calculator service. And then click OK. 
So once we click OK, what's going to happen now? Visual Studio, based on the Vistal document, it's going to generate a proxy class for us. Look at this. There's a folder called Service References. And under that, we have the namespace that we have provided, which is Calculator Service. And if you want to look at the generated proxy class, uh, click this button within the Solution Explorer, which says Show All Files. And then if you click this arrow, there is references.svc map and if you expand that we have this reference.cs file so if you open that file here we have a class called calculator web service soap client so this is the proxy class and if you scroll down look at this this class has got this add method and it's got two parameters, first number, second number, and their types are integers. So this is very much similar to what we have in our web service. Now, the client application, that is our web application, is going to communicate with this proxy class. And then that proxy class is going to invoke the web service method. So let's now add a web form to this web application. Let's click Add. And then within this web form, let's create a table. And let's set the style attribute. And within this table, let's include a TR tag. And then let's specify two TDs. So within the first TD, we'll just say, um, you know, we'll use a bold tag and then say first number. So this is the prompt for the user to enter the first number into the text box that we are going to add. And maybe let's call it txt first number. And let's make a copy of this table row. And let's name this second number. And let's call this txt second number. And then we need a label control to display the sum of the two numbers. So let's make another copy of this tr. And let's call it result. Instead of a text box, let's drag and drop a label control. and let's give it an ID of LBL result and let's get rid of this text property and then finally we need a button so let's include another TR and let's specify the column span for this TD to 2 and within this TD let's drag and drop a button control and let's change the ID of the button to button add and text on that to add. And let's flip this to the design mode. Double click on the button control to generate the click event handler. And here we are going to interact with the proxy class that we have generated. And if you remember, the name of the proxy class is web service soap I mean calculator web service soap client so let's go ahead and create an instance of this class and if you remember this class is present in calculator service namespace so here the namespace is calculator service the fully qualified namespace is calculator web application dot calculator service but within our web form we are already within that calculator web application namespace so when we say calculator look at that we can see calculator service namespace there dot what is the class that we are interested in calculator web service soap client so let's create an instance of that is equal to new soap client and we know that this client object has got add method so we are going to invoke the add method of the proxy class. And look at that. It expects two parameters to be passed. So where are we going to get the first number and second number from? From the um, web form user interface elements. So we have the text box called txt first number. Use the text property. But we need to convert that to an integer. So let's use the convert class and convert it to integer. In a similar fashion, let's also retrieve the second number from the other text box. 
So the other text box is txt second number. Now obviously when we call this method what is this going to do? This is going to call the web service add method and then it's going to add those two numbers and we are going to get the sum back. So let's store that result in a variable of type integer and let's call it result. Finally let's go ahead and display that result within the label control. So result dot to string. Alright now let's actually run this and see if it works as expected. So now if I press control F5 you know web services demo is actually set as the startup project. Um, you know so in order for us to run this web form as the startup page first we need to set this project as our startup project and then set this web form as the startup page okay or you can simply right click on the page and select this option view in browser okay so it's asking for the first number and second number let's say 10 20 and click add look at that you know 30 is displayed now if you look at you know the web application itself we don't have the logic of adding two numbers here where is the addition done that is done by the web service now if you recollect from the previous video session we access web services using HTTP protocol and the messages with web services are exchanged in SOAP format but are we sending a SOAP message to the web service no so who is doing that conversion for us so if you recollect from the previous session so if you go back to the web service when we click on add look at that we have here a SOAP um, request and response messages this is how a request must be sent for a web service method but we are not doing that here so who is converting this method call into a SOAP request message to the web service that's being done for us by this proxy class you know this calculator web service SOAP client so basically when this application that is the dotnet client application invokes the add method of the proxy class this proxy class is going to take these dotnet types um, you know the integers and then it's going to prepare a SOAP request message for us and then it's going to automatically call the web service method the web service will then execute that method um, you know adds those two numbers together and then it's going to send a SOAP response back to the proxy class not directly to the client application the proxy class is then going to deserialize that SOAP message back into .NET integer type and then hands it to the .NET application which is in our case uh, displaying that number within the label control okay so basically the process of serialization that is converting dotnet types to a soap request message and then once that response is received from the web service converting that soap response uh, back into dotnet types that is deserialization again is done by the proxy class okay so a all the hard work is done by the proxy class we consume the web service just like we would uh, any other class in a class library so it's no different all the hard work here is done by the proxy class for us so it's that simple even if you have a Windows application it's very much simpler you will have references folder within Windows application uh, you simply right click on that and select add service reference and you invoke the web service in a similar fashion all right. Now, in an interview, the interviewer may ask you the following questions related to consuming a web service. He may ask you, what is Vistil and what is its purpose? How is a proxy class generated? What is the use of proxy class? What actually happens when a web service reference is added? The answer for all these questions is present in these two paragraphs. So basically, Visual Studio generates a proxy class using the Vistil document. Vistal stands for Web Service Description Language. Vistal document formally defines a web service. And what does this Vistal document contains? It contains the list of all methods that are exposed by the web service, the parameters and their types, and the return types of the method. We have, uh, in fact, inspected the Vistal document as well. 
This information is then used by Visual Studio to create the proxy class. The client application calls the proxy class method. The proxy class will then serialize the parameters, that is the .NET types, and then prepares a SOAP request message and sends it to the web service. The web service executes the method and then it returns a SOAP response message back to the proxy class. The proxy class will then take the responsibility of deserializing that SOAP response message and then handing it back to the client application, that is in our case the ASP.NET web application. So we don't have to manually serialize or deserialize .NET CLR objects to and from SOAP format. All this hard work is taken care of the, by the proxy class. So the serialization and deserialization is done by the proxy class um, and, and it makes the life of developer much easier. All right. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.